Mavericks basketball is back, baby! Sort of. The Mavericks opened not last night, but the night before with the start of their preseason schedule going to Tulsa, Oklahoma to take on the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, we all expected this to be the debut, the Mavericks debut of Kristaps Porzingis. And hey, view number two, year two, that is, of Luka Doncic. That did not end up happening as midway through the afternoon, we found out that Porzingis was not going to play. As it turns out, the Mavericks had had a hard practice, hard practice, intense practice the day before, and the Mavericks are going to, as we know, be very careful and patient in bringing Porzingis along. Now, this is their decision. This is not because he's not ready. We already know that they're not going to play him in the second night of a back-to-back, or maybe maybe not the second night per se, but they're not going to play him in one of two games in a back-to-back throughout the year. So this is a way of just protecting him. Hey, we had a hard practice. We, for some stupid-ass reason, opened the preseason with back-to-back games, like a back-to-back right there. Whatever. They're going to go ahead and give him that day off. Hey, well, you know what? While we're at it, let's take Luka out of the equation too. Wolves, instead of OKC, we'll save ourselves for Detroit for that view. Fine, fine, we can wait one more day. Porzingis waited 20 months and three days before he got to take the court. What's one more day? Actually, it would have been 20 months and two days, and then he waited the one more day to get to 20 and three before he actually played. I digress. It doesn't really matter. The point is, he came back, and before we get to that, we are going to touch on a couple of notes from the Thunder game in that case. The Thunder basically were running, other than uh, Andre Roberson, who Still has not been back from a torn patella tendon. Uh, That was back in the year when they still had Carmelo Anthony on the team when he suffered that injury, so I don't know what's going on there. But they basically ran out their full unit of guys. They had Chris Paul, who actually was trying very hard on defense. Kudos to him uh, for being a veteran of his age. You would not expect that. Uh, They had him. They had Shai Gilgis Alexander. uh, Steven Adams, who opened the game by splashing a corner three. What? Bobin came back later and hit a three on him in the other direction from the top of the key. That was pretty nice. But uh, it's a weird world here now where we're getting all of these new three-point shooters as the NBA continues to be a, hey, everybody's got to be able to shoot the three kind of league. One note as well, uh, a starter in this game for the Mavericks, and he started in the next game as well, Justin Jackson. Now, he was phenomenal against the Thunder in 15 minutes. He scored 14 points on 6 of 8 shooting, including 2 of 2 from the 3 point, excuse me, 2 of 4 from the 3 point line. Uh, he, I, I like a lot what I see from him, and it, it's, it's nice to see that he's really making headway in terms of potentially being that last starter as I kind of projected and tried to make the case for. I don't know for sure that he's there yet. I still see areas of his game that are a little troubling. I still don't think he rebounds particularly well. Only one board in this game. Again, 15 minutes, but still, that's about what you're going to get probably uh, if you're coming off the bench for the Mavericks. So you got to find a way to convert better than that. And uh, even though he's got a really nice floater game, a really nice mid-range game in that way, an, an element of his game that you don't see many guys implement anymore. I saw it last year with him when he came over in those last 20 what was it, 29 games roughly, but I wanted to see more of it uh, in this case. So I like a lot what we're getting out of him. Will he be the starter come opening night, the regular starter? I don't know. Dorian Finney-Smith, if he can ever add a three-point shot ever somehow to his game, that's pretty much got to be your guy because he's a better defender, a better rebounder, a better slasher, a better dunker, better athlete in general, even though they're both the same height with the same wingspan. And even though Justin Jackson's not a bad defender, he's just not a guy who can come anywhere close to locking down someone on the perimeter, which Dodo, to an extent, can do. Now, not a whole lot else to say in this game. Again, you didn't have Luka or KP. Uh, your starting lineup was Tim Hardaway Jr., Justin Jackson, Dorian Finney-Smith, Maxi Kleba, and uh, DeLon Wright. DeLon Wright didn't give you a whole lot in this, but your starters only played about... DeLon Wright played 11 minutes. Two points, one of three shooting. One assist, one rebound. Not a whole lot to mention in that. OKC wins this game 119-104. We then go on to the next game of the schedule... This is the KP debut, and my, oh my, what a strong showing it was early. KP gets a steal, I think, on the second Detroit possession. Uh, Tips a pass, gets a steal, and then goes down and just catches the ball on the block, just turn and shoot over, I think it was Blake Griffin, and just splash. 
Just beautiful, beautiful shot. Uh, then the next couple possessions, he comes out and he's like, all right, I saw the ball go in the bucket once. I'm going to go do it again. Catches two straight passes, top of the key, deep range, top of the key, like a f- you know two or three feet off of that line. Catch and shoot from three, splash, splash. KP with eight quick points on three of four shooting. For the game, he ends up going with 18 points on seven of 18 shooting. So yes, his percentage did tail off in the second half, as it did with a lot of Mavericks. But KP, 18 points in his debut, seven boards. I think he also had, I have the note of it here. Uh, He also had two assists and the one steal I mentioned. Seven of 18 from the field, two of seven from three. Meanwhile, Luka Doncic pretty much did what he did as well. 21 points for him. One area of concern for Luka is the free throws. They do seem to continue to be a problem a little bit this year. He goes 5 of 10 at the line. That is really something he's going to need to step up. I understand it's his first preseason action. Conditioning might not be all the way there yet, which means tired legs. And tired legs show up most in three-point shooting and free throw shooting. And uh, guess what? 5 of 10 on free throws. And on threes, he was two of eight. So maybe a little something there to it. I did really like what we saw with the pick and roll game with Luka and KP. Uh, A lot of cool dynamic looks in that regard. And you just see how when you have three competent three point shooting around you, how you can open things up. Now with New York, KP attempted about four threes a game, a little over four three pointers a game. I expect that number to go up with Dallas. He got, what did I say earlier? Seven looks in this game. I think that number will go Right around there, six or seven looks a game from three for KP because not only do you have Luca who can find uh, a needle in a haystack in traffic in terms of finding his teammates for an open look, and let's be honest, KP uh, would be a rather large needle to find in a haystack, probably somewhat easy to find, I guess, at that point. But not only can he do that, but KP was a 40% three-point shooter before his injury, and now you also got the gravity of guys out there as well, like Seth Curry, who was 45% last year. Uh, I think a career 43% approximately. So you have guys like that, and it's going to open things up for you. I think KP will get a lot of catch-and-shoot opportunities. But one thing KP did show you, he can also still go off the dribble. His mobility looks really good in that game. Uh, You saw him at times crossing guys over and pulling up for a long two. Now, it's not a high-percentage shot, and it's a shot that you don't see as much of in the NBA these days. But the fact that he did it with such fluidity was really nice. I, I, I feel really good about where his mobility and uh, speed and all that is at compared to where he was pre-injury. But we'll have to see. Obviously, 18 shots to get 18 points is not efficient. But again, percentages dropped off in the second half. You saw some athletic plays from him. You saw a put-back dunk. I think Luka threw an alley-oop to Maxi that was broken up, but KP was right there to yam it home. So that was pretty cool. Uh, you also had an alley-oop on a pick-and-roll from him and Luka where he gets fouled and still is able to guide the ball in even though he doesn't get the dunk, still gets the and one. That was a really nice play there. Uh, so you saw a little bit of everything. You didn't get the shot blocking that I would have liked to have seen, but you know that's, that's going to be something. We're going to have to see how teams are going to attack Luka and KP in the pick-and-roll. KP is not good horizontal foot speed. Teams are going to try and draw his man out to set the pick and roll to put him in those situations. One, you take him away from the basket, which takes away a shot blocker. And two, you're attacking him and trying to get him into foul trouble, trying to expose a potential weakness there to get better matchups, better looks, etc. So that's something Dallas is going to have to be smart about and figure out how to do. It's not a new problem. They had the problem as well with Dirk and Nash back in the day. Luka, meanwhile, he's not a great individual defender like you can't be you can't tell him hey go lock down that guy on the perimeter and he'll go do it that's just not Luca's thing he is a very smart and savvy defender however so within a team defensive concept uh, I think he is I think I think he's pretty solid in that respect I think that's why you see him get a lot of steals and I think uh, that's why as well you see he's typically in the correct position sometimes he can get a little lost but you didn't see that as the year went on last year you saw it more in the early part of the year so I like a lot of that, uh, what they can do and how they're going to have to combat it. We'll see what Rick ends up doing in that respect. But there, there's a lot to like. Lucas stat line for the game, 21 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists, 3 steals, 7 of 18 shooting, 2 of 8 from 3. Again, I mentioned uh, free throws as well being a concern. Uh, you know that, that was something with him he knew was an issue last year. Rick Carlisle said early in camp that he worked on it all offseason. I'm willing to take it with a grain of salt, but in your first action for you to go 5 of 10 at the line, that's a little concerning here. 
KP for the game, 18 points, seven boards. That's about his average last year. Six or seven has always been about the number he's been between. Uh, seven boards, two assists, a steal, seven of 18 shooting as well, and two of seven. So in terms of shots and even shot variety, they were pretty much right there on the mark with one another. Um, so that that's interesting, a, a unique attack for sure. Let's see here. Brunson, man, Brunson continues to impress as well. In that first game, he had 10 points, five assists in 13 minutes. Uh, and he was, I, I felt pretty strong here again this year. A note on, I, I almost glossed over it. A note I had here, uh, I, I, ma- I made a note of Dalton Triggs' tweet on Twitter talking about Luka specifically as it uh, relates to free throw shooting. He says, Luka was a top 10 clutch scorer in the league last year. He's basically citing a metric uh, as a rookie. Of all the players on that list, however, Luka had the worst free throw percentage. He was 66.7%, two for every three. Uh, the next lowest was Bradley Beal at 77.4%. So yeah, he's got he's got room to improve. Luca was phenomenal in the clutch last year, except for at the free throw line. So that's something he really needs to continue to invest a lot of time and energy in. But everything else looked really good. You saw a lot of variety. You saw some tricky ball handling from Luca as well. Uh, he had the wrap around the back through his own legs, leading into a floater over. Uh, I think it was Drummond at that point. You saw a look like that. You saw him feeding KP with a couple nice finds. And you even saw situations where, you know, he kicked it down to KP in the low block after a, a pick and roll. I think it was Blake Griffin that was on KP at that point. And late in the shot clock, Griffin has played KP well. KP kicked it back, back out to Luka for a deep, deep three. Luka splashes it. So you see how sometimes even when you play these guys exactly right, it's still not enough because good defense better offense that's pretty much what you got there and with the kind of support you have around you now and regarding some of the improved three-point shooting you'll be really good delon wright for instance he got a couple great looks where it's like dude if you're going to give delon wright that kind of look throughout the year if he can hit 34 35 percent from three this year which would be a certain step up for him certainly um from what he's been throughout his career to this point but if he could add that element and be just a competent corner catch and shoot three-point guy he he can be damn effective for this team i already think he's an underrated addition although we didn't get a whole lot of chance to really see it through these first couple games in this game here he plays 20 minutes gets six points two rebounds or sorry two assists three rebounds um and one of three shooting from three so not off to a great start there, but you know he, he's a versatile defender. He's more for that. If he can add the other stuff, then that's the pleasant surprise they're hoping they can get from it still. Additionally, you had Seth Curry, who went two of two from three. He had eight points. Uh, Seth Curry in the corner, dude, is nearly automatic. You had, you had two plays. In fact, same side of the court, just opposite corners on one of them. Uh, you have a play breakdown ball bouncing along the baseline. Curry just picks it up, and even though the defender's right there, Curry splashes the three in the guy's face as the shot clock is winding down. Later, he's in the opposite corner for a nice skip pass find and knocks it down again. Seth Curry, even though he only had eight points on the game, just the option he adds to your team opens things up a little bit. And his best year of his career was with Dallas where he averaged better than 12 points. I think he shot 43% from three on that season. Career-wise, that's basically what he is as well, 43%. Shot 45% last year with Portland. And I think he'll get a lot of great looks, especially when you see him more on the floor with KP and Luka as well. So there's a lot to like. I will say Justin Jackson didn't have a good game here. Uh, He had two points in 23 minutes. Yowza. But he didn't take many shots. He had two shot attempts on the game. 0 for 1 on 3 and 1 for 2 overall. So... I, I don't know what that's about. He did have a steal and a turnover, but he, his plus minus wasn't strong, although neither was Luca's. Uh, Porzingis was a plus 13, so there you go. There's the only starter with a plus and the plus minus, and that was him going against Blake Griffin being the four. Dwight Powell still not playing in this, so you have um, you have Kleba again. Kleba in 22 minutes gives you two points, three boards, one of five shooting, 0 of three from three. Kleba's better than this. I'm not, I still don't want Kleba as my starter. I think Dwight Powell is a better choice there, but the Mavericks as a team have a lot to gain, right? Like they have a lot of improving to do because defensively in the second half, you saw how things kind of came unglued. And that was the story even last year, the third quarter, 
bit the Mavericks in the ass frequently. We saw it here. They built a pretty pretty decent lead in that first half. And then in the second half, it kind of came unglued. The offense lost its rhythm. Guys started missing shots. They were being sloppy with the ball. Meanwhile, on the other end, they were giving up lane penetration. They were giving up dump passes down low because they weren't rotating quick enough to account for it. And so you saw putbacks. You saw layups. Uh, you just saw a lot that the Pistons were doing where they just they started just beating you with high percentage shots. It wasn't that they were suddenly shooting the lights out necessarily. It's just that they were getting the easy buckets because the Mavericks weren't executing. And for this being this starting unit's first real action, um, I, I think that that's understandable. But you still need to you still need to address it. You need to improve it. And I want to see as well them improve with regard to rebounding. KP did about what KP's done before, but Kleba, man, if you're the starting five, you can't give me three boards in twenty plus minutes, dude. You just can't. Uh, Dwight Powell, he's a better rebounder than Kleba, I think, but at the same time, he's not a great rebounder either, so it's going to have to be a rebound by committee approach, and yes, between Luka and DeLon Wright, you should have one of the better rebounding backcourts in the NBA this year, but there's still a long way to go in that regard, and I think that the team's going to have to do something to address it. They'll have to make some kind of midseason trade. You've seen some analysts project them somewhere in the as high as the seven seed, uh, that that's not just local radio guys here or newspapers or anything like that. That is also uh, national guys. That's guys that work for ESPN and stuff projecting that. And I think it's just kind of a dark horse projection. They're they're believing in the Luca KP train. I don't think the team is there yet as currently constructed. I think the rebounding and defense are going to be too much of a problem for me uh, to really buy into that idea fully. But if they can if they can make some kind of move during the season that shores up on that front a little bit then I'll feel better about their chances to maybe, maybe try and sneak in. I think they'll be in the thick of the race. I just don't think that they have quite enough tools in the toolbox, so to speak, to get the job done. But I'm very, I'm very excited. At the very least, this is a young team on the rise that we can actually enjoy watching. And, you know, just that's what, that's what I want to say to everyone. This team is going to frustrate you some nights. There's going to be nights where, They'll make dazzling plays, sure, but they just don't defend well enough. They don't do enough of the little things to win the game. And it's okay to be frustrated, but don't don't get too hung up on it. This is a young team on the rise. Enjoy the ride. You know, like this isn't this isn't like all these years post title where we've said, hey, here's Dirk and here's whatever veteran free agents we could, you know sticking glue around him to try and make some kind of push just to get back into the playoffs. This is an actual young core rising up and they should be really good. And what's better is because your main two guys are so young. Not, I mean, what's KP 24 KP is 24 now and Lucas 20. So you should easily, easily, if you can stay healthy, be able to continue improving with these two guys. And then you got a bunch of, you got a really good bench unit around them there's a lot to like. There's a lot to like with this team, but just try and be a little patient. Enjoy the ride because when you don't have this and you're in those purgatory years we had before, before Luca and all that, it's really rough to enjoy those. And there's flashes and glimmers and you just kind of have to hang on to them in those moments. But this should be a legitimate, uh, continuous movement in the right direction, I think. I mean, not not every day is going to be a step in the right direction, but I think by and large, you're going to see things very much trending upward and onward. And that's what we want to see. And we, we have two guys now that you should be able to build around for the long term. That is something tremendous uh, for this team, for a team that has lacked that identity for a little while now. So let's see here. Their next preseason game is going to be Friday against Milwaukee. That'll be their home opener for the preseason. So you'll have Greek Freak coming in. And then they uh, host on Monday the Thunder again. So two two Thunder matchups in the preseason. There are so many preseason games, man. It's crazy. What is this, like eight? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten preseason games. That's That's too many. I remember when the preseason was like six games or something to that effect. But... Maybe that's a little on the short end. Let, let's split the difference and say six to eight tops. But regardless, uh, we got a ways to go until the season opens up. Wait a minute, that's not right. It's not ten games. This schedule isn't distinguishing between preseason and po- or regular. 
stupid app making me look like a doofus. Anywho, point being, there's a lot to look forward to with this team as we get ready for the start of the regular season. And the last preseason game, I see it here, will be at the Clippers. So you'll get a look at that ridiculous team potentially, or at least a glimpse of them. Uh, one of the best teams in the Western Conference at that point. So it'll be fun. Hang tight. Uh, I'm not going to be able to go live later today. That's why I'm doing this video instead. But uh, I will be back on here to do some live stream live streaming before the regular season starts. Of course, I'll continue with the weekly thing. And I'm going to try and sprinkle in some of these more videos and uh, the occasional live stream where I can. Maybe some game companions. So be on the lookout for that. That's all my time. Until next time, remember... Every legend was once a prospect. Salute.